So that this powerful can, there's power can be powerful, which is a lame way of saying these normal people don't really need to have all this power. Because it's, it's too powerful for them. It's a, you know, it's a bunch of Jedi magic that they just can't understand and grasp. So, it overwhelms them. And what do they do? They freak out. Oh, I'll look at my, my site. I don't know how to add a blog. I don't know how to add whatever. I don't know how to manage it. And while Drupal gives us a good start for being able to build content types and manage our content and views coming up in core, this is incredible. We can do a hell of a lot better because the defaults are really only okay. Um, so basically, as a default, let's look at yeah, this is a kind of the main content page that we all, we've all seen. This is live content on a recently developed site, so don't, pay attention. don't write anything down. Um, but in the end, this is what we see. Yeah, it's all right. It doesn't really do anything for me, though. So what happens when we need more? Because we're not always building a page and an article <coughs> site. I mean, I guess you can, but I think most of us like people because we can do more than that. So we can do better. So all of these humans, yes, help them, help them, please. We must help all these people that we're making our websites for. And because our content admins are a human. And if you notice, I'm saying human here instead of users, as is often used in Drupal speak, although in D7 they change that to people, I guess, in the menu item. Everybody still calls them users. They are human. They're people with feelings, and they like to do stuff, and they probably don't like using Drupal as much as we do, but maybe we can change that by giving, making them such nice, easy, um, easy to use. So we can simplify how all these people add their content, how they manage their content, and how they get around. And it's Drupal, so we can add stuff and configure stuff. We don't have to completely rewrite the way everything works to do this. So creating content. For most people, most new clients, this is everything. How many times has somebody said, I want to have a website, I want to manage the content myself. And for a lot of people, that's a given these days. But it's still the number one thing. They want to be able to have an About Us page and have a new section that they update, update once a year. <laughs> so even though they say, I'm going to update it all the time, it's going to be great. They don't. But in the end, they, they need the ability to do so. So vertical tabs, I think, help clean up the content forms. Um, and that, remember we had all these expanding field sets going up and down in D6 and everything else, and those were a mess. And you tell people, oh, you need this option, it's, it's in there. They say, where? That link that looks weird, and you click it, and all of a sudden your screen gets bigger. People don't like that. It, it, once again, these are normal people. It kind of freaks them out. Well, what's all this hidden stuff coming up? Why are there five at the bottom? I click one, and that one goes down, and everything else. So vertical tabs are cool. They help clean up a lot of that kind of publishing options, um, menu options, things along those lines. And once again, the basic forms are OK out of the box. There's a basic form. Create a basic page. And you know, down at the bottom, you can see that we have these vertical tabs down there, which are menu settings and revisions and URL. And that's a lot cleaner. It's a lot easier to say, whoop, a lot easier to say, go back, uh, you know, if you need to have any revision, go click that tab because you can see it's easy and that'll bring the tab over nicely. But let's face it, once again, we're not making basic pages. Now this obviously looks a bit ridiculous because you can't see it. But this is an actual content type that I've made. And, you know, I've got some examples here. Um, Um, anyway, we have a content type here. Oh, it's because it's a responsive site and it's moved it around. I guess I did my job all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so let's look at this piece of content here. This is a model. This is like a DP1535, and there's a video here, there's a bunch of images, there's text, there's this table with, you know, cool little stuff here, there's links for related content that people can add, there are downloads, and this is just a block so you can find your nearest dealer, for, depending on where you are. So if you wanted to create one of these, you will, I don't know if you will, because I can't see them all, we'll create a product model. Now here's an example of all these cool things built in. That, that, that one node type had all those features. Right, so we've got the title, language is multilingual site, product categories, <coughs> top content, lower, lower cost content, productivity content, safety content, options content, model range, 
Video, listing image, images, links. Man, that's a lot. Oh yeah, downloads. I thought it was done. No, I only have all this down there. So, that's quite complicated. And all of my normal users see this and freak out and go, oh my god, look at all this, this is crazy. And that's not cool. So my solution is vertical tab everything. <coughs> all those other things, put it all in vertical tabs. Not just your menus, not just your publishing options, not just your URL settings, vertical tab everything. And yeah, everything. Like, seriously, I vertical tab my mom. <laughs> like, she likes it in there, she's told me. And she makes really wicked lemon meringue pie as well. And yes, uh -oh. Yes, LibreOffice is crashing. Oh, mum is required. Okay, yeah, there we go. <laughs> what a cheesy joke, but anyway. So yeah, so once again, here's our normal content form that we saw before with just the page. And look, it's already, it's already way cleaner, okay? So now what if we look at this really complicated page and we look at it nice and simple? <sighs> All of those ridiculous pieces of con you know, uh, fields are <coughs> gone. So whereas before we had the title, these are all, this is kind of the main content here, this title, language, product category, etc. All this kind of topic here. And then what's this lower cost content, productivity content, what is all this? Stuff? So if you don't look at that. That. Yeah, we have this cool little, you know, we have the box here. So on the, on the cool form, we have a tab box. And this would look better on a bigger screen. The headman isn't quite responsive yet. But everything is it's laid out. And all of these are optional. What they need to make one of these is right here. Everything else is hidden. So instead of showing your, your clients this massive form full of stuff that they may or may not want to fill out, they do want to fill out this stuff because this is, this is the main kind of point of this, of this concept. So... To do this, you need the field group module, field underscore group, I believe, I hope, I have to check that. Um, there is field group, but check that now. Um, it does really cool things for displaying your content as well, but for cleaning up your forms, it works brilliantly as well. You can have separate groupings of things for your forms and for your display. So it shortens the forms as we've seen, and it simplifies things so your clients don't recoil in fear. Once again, showing your clients 30 fields. And sometimes you do end up with that many fields. is isn't always cool. Um, and it gets your forms to the point of the content. If they need to fill out a title field and a body field to create that, <coughs> and there's 30 extra fields for images or options or links or whatever else you want to put in there, just show them the basic stuff. Just the absolute least amount of things that they need to do is, is all these right here. These couple of fields, which is quite easy. It's a title, it's a taxonomy term, <coughs> and it's their content. That's all they need to say. Um, Yes, only add what they need to see, then additional things you can hide and put in the vertical tabs as you, as you see fit, really. So, in addition, it hides really long lists of references and taxonomy terms and things along those lines. I like to use just radio buttons or tick boxes for long lists of um, references because everything is right in front of you. And sometimes in select elements, people have to scroll through and there's different widgets, but sometimes just putting them all out there is a really good way for clients to be able to scroll through and say, I, I need this reference or this category or something along those lines. And if you put all that on the main page, the main form of the basic content, it really makes that form a lot longer and a lot more complicated. So you can hide all of that stuff then when they know, well, how I need to associate it with this kind of content, they can just click on that tab and do that in there. They don't have to see it until they need to see it. And you can also, so yeah, so you can add more fields without making form look huge. Once again, bigger forms, clients recording in here. And you can add in additional functionality without additional complexity. And basically that means, for example, we have here, we have this front page slideshow thing, which is going horribly wrong. Like, it's a crap there. <coughs> so anyway, this is a very typical thing on sites, and you might have some sort of extra content type for this. Now, we can actually build that into the actual site, and I should have signed in earlier. 
because on this site, it's actually built into... Oh, this is the wrong one. This is an old one. Hold on. I'm rubbish. If anybody has any questions, feel free to just um, work them up as, well, as needed. Okay. So those are just pages in there, right? So if we go to add a page, we have this vertical tab on here called front page slideshow. Now instead of building an extra content type, an extra views, an extra everything else, I have this, this functionality is built right into this node. So if they create any page on their site and they want to add to that slideshow, they don't now have to create a separate piece of content to go in that slideshow. They can just say, hey, I'll go to that page and I'll add it there. So they have just tick that box, that's just the flag that I have into an alternate tab. They can pick their headline position, they can pick a custom headline, they can pick a custom caption, they can pick a, a, a custom image. And these are all overrides, otherwise the default kind of title would be used, etc. This is all built into the content type. So for the 90% of the pages that they need to add to the site, all they need is this, title and body. That's it. And then when they say, but we want to add these four pages to the front page, then they can go down there. They don't have to ever look at this until they need to. And that's what vertical tab is. So once again, there's a screenshot of that exact screen, which is really useful since I just showed it to you. <sighs> I should go over this better. Um, in addition to vertical tabs and things, you can keep cleaning things up. Disable the preview button, especially if you're using an admin theme, because it doesn't show up in the same formatting as they want it to see, and it just confuses people. So just disable it. If your clients say, I want to see what it looks like before it's on the site, I'll say, don't publish it. Just untick the box that says publish, save it, say, does that look cool? Yeah. Then publish it. So just, just get rid of preview. It's, you know, if, if your front-facing theme is the same as your admin theme, then it's actually okay. But for the most part, in building stuff using the admin theme, I get rid of it. It doesn't seem well. And like I said, they expect kind of to see what it's going to look like on the front facing page. If it's on the page and it doesn't need to be get or rid of it, Drupal has a tendency to output a whole bunch of stuff. And that's Drupal's job, because Drupal doesn't know what you're using it for, what's actually, you know, Drupal's just a thing. You can a website of back. So as you can see, you can see the image. Like, the whole <laughs> point of this content type is to see the image. And here we've got landscape banner types and portrait banner types, etc. So where do these live? Because you start making all these views, and like, you know, the, the main content page is there by default. So where do these views live? There is a great module called Contextual Administration. Uh, content <coughs> in short. It does loads of cool things, but what it allows you to do is create um, uh, menus of things. Actually, you go. Creates these pages because these are all views book operation views, and this is just Drupal's default way of handling this stuff. But it creates these things, and you can set permissions on them, etc. So only the right user roles command can um, can get to all these things, which is another great thing about views book operations in general, because you can say you have access to edit pages, but you have access to edit, edit banners, and you have access to edit models, and really fine grain uh, permissions. So that's where all these views are living. So I'll typically create like a manage content page to add a manage content, that's what this would say. And that's cool. So we have this kind of little family home for our views, because otherwise they were just kind of orphaned views out there with no place, no, no central repository for them. So we've built a nice home for all these views to live, because otherwise we have homeless views and they're like smackhead views and they're asking you for 20p for the bus. And we don't want our views to do that. Contextual administration is pretty cool. So it can also be used to create admin areas that other users wouldn't normally be able to get to because it uses um, Page Manager, part of CTools, and you can assign a certain page to say, well, these roles can have it, or these um, people with permissions can have it, or whatever kind of context or access rules you want for these to happen. Um, like it'll allow you to edit taxonomy terms and vocabularies without having that administer permission. And there's also that extra permission for edit, delete, in Drupal 7, if you've ever given somebody that permission, you say, well, how do I edit these terms? Well, then you have to go to that term page and click the Edit tab, and that's rubbish. 
with contextual administration, you can give people easy ways to manage all of those things because without having to give them those super admin permissions that you may or may not want to give them anyway. And it actually makes those permissions make sense because I hate having to tell people, go to this screen and click on that when they should just be able to go to some sort of manage links, cat you know, kind of manage categories page. You mean a list of all the content with edit buttons beside them? Is that well, like, no, like, like, like these terms. Right. This isn't the default um, taxonomy term page. It's you know, this is admin manage categories language. Th this is a custom page I made through contextual administration. But otherwise, these users wouldn't have access to this actual page. And it also means you can create really fine grained permissions for separate vocabularies. So I can say, once again, you can manage the um, section vocabulary, you can manage the language vocabulary, and you can manage the dealer regions vocabulary. Because the permission system doesn't give you that fine grained Exactly, exactly. You, 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 you can do that edit delete permission. Yeah. But once again, you have to go to that page, click the edit tab. Now there's an admin screen just for it. And the contextual administration can do that for you. So administration menus as well. Drupal by default will put your navigation menu and like you know if you have a standard install on your kind of left sidebar, your first sidebar for that'll have like your ad content links and stuff like that in it. But not all the pages on my sites have these sidebars. So if you're if you're putting your links for your clients to manage stuff in your front facing theme, what happens if that theme changes? What happens if that sidebar doesn't exist anymore? I mean, yeah, you could use context or panels or something and say, here is over here and here it's down there to match where the page is. But once again, that's kind of rubbish. So get your admin menus for your clients outside of your front-facing theme. It's just confusing. And your front-facing theme, they should see what the public sees, what anonymous users see, not what they need to see, which is their links to manage their content and create their content. So why not use the admin menu module? Admin menu is for us. We are the site builders, we are the admins, they are the content admins, or the blog posters, or the user managers, or whatever roles you want to define. Admin menu is for us. Admin menu works for us because we know it, or toolbar, I hate toolbar, but admin menu is for us. So I use QuickBar. And why? Well, it's under love, but it's, it's great. But it's easy to understand. Like, when I started clicking up here, how many people couldn't understand what was going on here? Right. You want to add content? Yeah, I need to add a dealer. Yeah, cool. You want to... Yeah. You need to manage... It's, it, it's all at the top of the page. It's not in your theme. So then if, if they go look, oh, what, 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 what's the home page look like today? You know, there's no... Ooh, that's going a bit mental. <laughs> um, it's not here. But, it's, but everything is always one click away. So if they need to get to their menus, if they need to get to their categories, it's all, it's out of the front facing theme. And QuickBar is brilliant as this. It also minimizes page loads because as you can see, you can say, well, man, it's content, cool. So what do you mean it's not in the front page? You mean it's not like edit in place? Is that no, I mean, if, if, if um, let me see. Uh, I don't have an example. Maybe. It's not linked in a block. It, exactly, right, exactly. Right, Otherwise, right. it's yeah, all in, yeah, in a, yeah, in a yeah, block. Yeah, so yeah, over here, right. yeah, you so see yeah, navigation. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, th this is the front-facing theme. So that's going to confuse them, like, what does it actually look like if you're... Like, exactly. You have to keep on switching yeah. between different browsers, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah or like, yeah. What, if, what, if you, what if you go to a page and there's no left sidebar where this is, and all of a sudden right. their menu to add content is now on the right. Yeah. And that's, that's really inconsistent. So using something that kind of puts the links across the top, as you see, I like admin menu, but isn't admin menu, is what I use QuickBar for. And this, and this just uses Drupal's normal menu system, so these are just, you know, children of the managed content menu item. So you just mentioned admin menu, as in the, the contrib. Yeah, this one up here, yeah. this is admin so, menu toolbar style. So can you combine those two together, like if you want that for developing, you want the admin menu, but you also want the... Yeah, both of us. Yeah, 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 but I think they kind of stack yeah, up yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 you end up with some sort of like Franken menu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just wrong. So how do you... You do it by role, and you say you only show quick bottom. Right. Yeah, yeah, and we'll, we'll also... Um, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Um, <laughs> we've already been through all these points, and, but it, it uses any menu you want, and it's customizable per role. So if we go to quick bar configuration, we can see these both have the navigation menu. Let's say we have other menus. You know, we can we can assign different <laughs> roles, different menus, completely different menus. Period. But also, it's using Drupal's default menu you know, menu system. Right. So 
So if somebody doesn't, if somebody doesn't have permission to add a blog entry, they're not going to get the add blog entry menu item because the you know Drupal's permissions take care of that. So sometimes content admins also need to be user admins. I'm going to have to step up the pace here a little bit. Um, and views both operations and context admin can also be used to manage users instead of the default um, user page. A good additional module is control access to user settings. And actually, as an example, if you go to users here and then manage users, um, this is different. This is, the, this is a, a different screen than, than, than the default users because this is my play username, this is a real person, this is different roles. I was testing these were spam people that signed up before I had them all installed. But if, if you give people access to the normal manage users page, admin is going to show up in there. And they go, your user one, whatever you name your user one, is going to show up in there. And if people, people will go, oh, admin, let's see what that is. Or whatever your user one, what, who is that user? And I'll, I'll always, you know, use um, user protect module to make sure people can't edit or accidentally delete user one or whatever. But once again, it goes back to earlier that if it's, they're being shown it and they shouldn't, get rid of it. And since this is a view, you can say, show all these users except user one, except anonymous, except whatever. You can completely customize it. And once again, you can have different screens for different people as well. Um, role delegation is really cool. This user role that I'm logged in with right now, if I go to <coughs> add a user. Um, oh, and because you can see they only get these three user roles that they can add. There's more roles here, but that's role delegation module, which allows you to assign, say, these roles can assign these roles. Otherwise, we'll see all of the roles, and there might be roles that you don't want some end users to add. So then you, once again, really find the permissions. permissions. Because otherwise, they'll call you and say, oh, what's this admin user? You don't want to say, forget about it. You just don't want to show them that user. Um, it doesn't quite work with context admin, because you can make context admin custom screens to add users as well. You can do a lot with that, but it, otherwise, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, a quick plug, because it's kind of tasty back end, I'm currently working on what will hopefully be my first contrib module, which gives users an easy way, if they're adding blocks, a way to where you can define a set of classes for them to pick. So if you've ever used block class module, it's a brilliant way of just adding classes. So if you want to say, we have this class, Apple, whatever. But you don't often want to give these to non-technical users because they might say, well, what's CSS? What does this class mean or whatever? So through this, there is actually, where is Block class select will allow <coughs> you to, there we go, have a predefined list of classes that you can offer your end users to be able to assign or not assign. And once again, so that way if you say, oh, if you want to add a block and make the background blue, you could say class BG blue or whatever. Still in development, on the way, but since I have all of your captive attention, I wanted to mention it. So this is what it does, and I just explained all that. So there is a tasty backend <coughs> feature if you want to add your own tasty backend to your site. It works with Drupal's um, standard install. So pages and articles, basic page and articles. And it basically gives you the um, quick bar. It gives you certain user roles. It gives you the views to manage those things. It gives you the context admin screens. It gives you some really cool stuff. It basically does all of this for you. Um, it's a sandbox because some configuration is necessary after. I want to turn it into an install profile. But as with lack of time and everything, it's still just a sandbox feature. Um, but yeah, so it, it, well, yeah, there is documentation. If you go to the project page, there is documentation. It's, it is there, I swear. Um, once again, demo site, tastybackend.com. If you're feeling brave, Google Tasty Backend. <laughs> <laughs> it's safe for work. Seriously. <laughs> I was very happy when I first Googled it and it, it all came up with the stuff I've done. So. <laughs> You know, after page two, you're on your own. <laughs> page one is like recordings of this session from other camps and stuff like that. So if you ever think, oh, what's this taste? What was that thing? <laughs> Google will even give you, like, you know, a little suggested search for it. So uh, thank you for listening. Um, once again, captive audience, here's all my contact info. And yes, I'm a shameful promoter. So you can all get in contact with me if you need your own PC back end or whatever. Um, 
there any questions while we're at the end? Just a half hour now? Yeah. Very quick one. One of the things mentioned was the really use of things, offering people the option to view the content or send the content, save the content, it's unpublished, so they can view it rather than using it.